Worship for Sunday, July the 4th, 2021. Jesus does great deeds of power and gives his disciples authority over demons. Jesus asks his disciples to go out without money or supplies so that they will be dependent on how others receive them. When we are sent from the assembly to witness and to heal, we are asked to be vulnerable, to be dependent on the reception of others. The Spirit always operates in the between, between Jesus and his Abba, between Jesus and us, between you and me, between us and those to whom we are sent. The Lord be with you. As we gather to worship in various places, may we be blessed by God who forms us in word, sacrament, and community. We acknowledge with gratitude and respect that we are on the traditional land of the neutral, Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples who've cared for it for thousands of years. More recently, the Haldeman Proclamation of 1784 granted a tract six miles on either side of the Grand River from its source to Lake Erie to the Six Nations Haudenosaunee of the Grand River. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Stephen Weber from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Cambridge, Ontario, and I'm glad to have you join us for worship today. A special welcome again today to the people of St. Matthew's Lutheran Church in Conestogo, just outside of Waterloo. They will be worshiping with us virtually while their pastor, Joanna, is on leave. As you likely know, the unprecedented heat suffered by the Western United States spread to our westernmost provinces this past week. At just under 50 degrees Celsius, the heat wave has shattered the all-time record high temperature for Canada. The historic heat wave also tragically resulted in many heat-related deaths and wildfires, and it points to our lack of care for God's creation, as we have contributed to the current global climate crisis. So in our prayers today, we'll include one written by our National Bishop Susan Johnson on this topic. Thank you to our Minister of Music, Katrina Lowe, and her mother, Karen Peters, for playing and recording a prelude and postlude for us today. Thank you also to our reader for today, Josh Hyde. At whatever time and location you are accessing this, thank you for doing so. It is good to be together in whatever way possible in this time of physical distancing. We continue now with worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of the covenant, in our baptism, you call us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us the courage you gave the apostles that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The children's time. Yes, no, or... I'm so very glad that you're here today, and I know that you're bringing sunshine and joy wherever you are. When you ask your parents for something that you want, what do they usually say? For example, if you ask your parent for a cookie when it's close to supper time, would they say yes, no, or possibly later? Another example, if you ask your parent for some extra broccoli at supper time, would they say yes? No, or later? What if you ask your parents for an increase in your allowance? When I was about your aid, I asked my dad to increase my allowance. Do you know what he said? He said, sure, how much would you like? And I thought he must be incredibly rich to let me answer a question like that. So since I was making 10 cents a week, that was a very long time ago when you could buy an entire chocolate bar or a comic book for 10 cents. So since my allowance was 10 cents a week, I decided to ask for 25 cents a week. And my dad said, yes. What if you had a problem that was really bothering you and you asked your parent to make the problem magically disappear? Would they say yes, no, or I'll help you power through the problem? St. Paul, someone who taught a lot of people about Jesus, St. Paul had a problem. He called it a thorn in his side. 
We don't know if he really had something prickly or painful in his side, or if he was just using an expression, which meant that something was really bothering him. But we do know that three times he asked God to get rid of the problem. Do you think that God said yes, no, or I'll help you power through the problem? God told Paul that God was going to be with him, and God would be helping him, even though St. Paul had a problem. The problem might not go away, but God would be there to help and support Paul. When we pray and ask God for something, God doesn't always say yes. Just like our parents, God sometimes says yes, no, later, or I'll help you power through the problem. God's power and God's strength can help us to power through the bad times in our lives. When we feel, re when we feel weak, remember that God is strong. Here's a video for us. Maybe you'd like to dance and sing along. Now I invite you to move into your favorite prayer posture. It may be hands open facing up to receive the gift of God's presence in prayer. It may be hands folded and eyes closed to help you concentrate, or it may be crossing your arms across your chest to form an X, the first letter of Christ in Greek, and it feels like a hug from God. Now let us pray. Dear God, thank you for hearing us in prayer and for helping us with your power to get through problems. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Your parents have children's bulletins for you that you're welcome to work on at any time, even while you're listening to the sermon. God's power made perfect in weakness. Christians do not boast of their own accomplishments. Rather, Christian boasting focuses attention on how the power of Christ is present in our lives especially in times of weakness and vulnerability. No matter what our circumstance in life, Christ's grace is sufficient for us. A reading from 2 Corinthians. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, 
that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except for my weaknesses. And if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, but it would leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Sending of the Twelve to preach and heal. At home and abroad, Jesus and his disciples encounter resistance as they seek to proclaim God's word and relieve affliction. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus came to his hometown and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that he has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. The Sermon. Thank God for thorns? Power and strength are important qualities in our lives. We prefer to be in control rather than to be controlled. We want to make our own decisions and go our own ways. Because getting older can rob us of power and strength, we commonly fear the aging process. Think about how much time and money we spend trying to make ourselves look younger, all because we fear that loss of power and strength which comes with aging. Many of the things we do in life are done for the feeling of power and strength which come from them. When I was younger, I enjoyed canoeing. And part of the, its appeal for me was that for a time, at least, I was self-sufficient when canoeing. Everything I needed was packed with me in the canoe. Canoeing also appealed to me because of that sense of power, which came from beating a series of rapids by successfully reading and then negotiating through them. Others get a feeling of power and strength by doing dangerous things skydiving, bungee jumping, car racing, or taking chances in business. Some get a feeling of power and strength through creating, painting, and gardening, and writing, cooking a great meal, or making a fantastic dessert, woodworking, and repairing things. 
Some get a feeling of power and strength through control, controlling a fast motorbike or sports car, controlling the outcome of a meeting, even controlling knowledge by being smarter than most. Kids love to play with pretend guns, I think because they too want that feeling of power and control. Most of us have some way of feeling powerful and in control. Well, St. Paul knew about power and control too. He knew what it was like to feel important and to influence people. St. Paul had an impeccable Hebrew background. He was a dedicated Pharisee who had studied, studied under the very best. A respected apostle who had been granted a vision of heaven while on the road to Damascus. St. Paul had endured the worst all so that he could preach. The 39 lashes, imprisonment, shipwreck, and stoning, hunger and thirst, nothing would keep Paul from being a missionary. And his dedication and zeal brought results. Churches in Corinth, Philippi, and Galatia, Ephesus, Colossia, and Thessalonica. As far as apostles go, St. Paul was the most successful, the most respected, and the most powerful. But power and success are not what Christianity is about. Power and success can be dangerous things, for power and success can make us think that we don't need God or one another. So, explains St. Paul in today's second reading, to keep me from becoming too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Now, first of all, it's important to note that this thorn was from Satan, not from God. But God used Satan's thorn for Paul's good. And Paul came to see that the thorn was given to keep him from being too elated. But that was certainly not its intention, at least not until God got hold of it. We're never exactly told what this thorn was. There have been many educated guesses, though. The early church bishops thought that Paul's thorn might have been migraine headaches. Martin Luther believed the thorn to be a group of fundamentalistic legalists who tried to oppose St. Paul's concept of salvation by grace alone. Other scholars have found biblical hints that Paul may have been almost blind. In the letter to the church in Galatia, Paul wrote that they would have willingly plucked out their eyes for him. And St. Paul's epistles often ended with his own handwriting in large letters, he would point out, perhaps indicating that his eyesight was pretty poor. Paul's thorn could have been a speech impediment, for some in Corinth had said that his speech was contemptible. Others have suggested that St. Paul's thorn was malaria, epilepsy, or that he was just plain ugly. And there's biblical evidence for that too. Paul's opponents charged that his, quote, bodily presence is weak, unquote. But whatever the thorn was, it helped Paul to rely on God's strength and not his own resources and power. And it is that way for us, too. For we, too, are more likely to seek God in times of trouble rather than when all is well, when we feel powerful and self-sufficient. A pastor, in commenting on Paul's thorn and how God used it, said, This Corinthians passage had me thinking of the time when I worked in a hospital during my training to become a pastor. My supervisor told me that I did much better when I wasn't feeling well. When you feel okay, you overdo it, he said. When I wasn't feeling well, I relied far more on God because I knew that I didn't have the resources to get through it myself. When you and I are most vulnerable, we also tend to be more open to receiving God's empowering spirit. God's power is made perfect in our weakness, wrote Paul. For when we feel our weakness and our limitations, then we're, we're more likely to rely on God. And so weakness can become a vehicle to drive us closer to God. That's why God did not remove St. Paul's thorn. Sometimes our need is a good thing. Years ago, farmers shared large equipment, such as combines, and that sharing helped them to look out for one another. But now farmers tend to have their own equipment, 
and so are separated from one another. Sometimes our need is a good thing. Ari Nowen was an excellent Christian writer. He wrote a book called The Wounded Healer. In that book, Nowen says that it's only because we've been wounded or hurt that we can enter into the healing process for others. It's only because we ourselves have been wounded that we can begin to feel compassion for the hurt, pain, and emotion of someone else. As it says in our funeral liturgy, God comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. The thorns that wound us make the healing of others possible. Sometimes our need is a good thing. Life is not about power and strength, for in the face of the really important things, love, life itself, and health, we're actually quite powerless. We can't force love. We can't control life, nor can we guarantee our health. Life, then, is about our recognizing our need of God and of one another. And thorns can help us to do that. What we need is often not to have the thorns and the difficulties removed, but to know that God and those around us care and will be with us in thorny times. To keep me from being too elated, wrote St. Paul, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, wrote St. Paul. With God's help, good can come from thorns sent by Satan. So with St. Paul, can we actually begin to give thanks to God for thorns? And the people said, Amen. before the triune God in prayer, saying, Lord, in your love, and responding, hear our prayer. God of the Church, through the waters of baptism, you claim people of all races, ethnicities, and languages as your beloved children. Sustain the baptized and increase our faith that your gospel may be proclaimed throughout the earth. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. God of creation, the earth groans in the current heat wave. 
We pray for those fighting wildfires. We pray for those who suffer due to the heat, those who have lost their lives, and those who mourn. We thank you for neighbors who are stepping forward to offer shelter, coolness, compassion, and water, the gift of life. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. God of compassion, you became vulnerable in the person of Jesus Christ in solidarity with the disempowered. Strengthen those who feel faint, give courage to those who fear, and bring wholeness to those in need including those whom we name before you. We pray especially for rescue workers and all who have lost loved ones in the Florida condominium collapse. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. God of inclusion, we pray for Canada upon the uncovering of yet more unmarked graves of Indigenous children and adults. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear the reality of prejudice and systemic racism in Canada. Help us to know your deep love for all people and move us to reconciliation that we may reflect your inclusivity. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. God of holiness, you send us out into the world to proclaim your love. We pray for our outreach ministries. Equip us as we leave worship to witness and serve our neighbors. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. God of all, you, care us to, you call us to care for all people. As our municipal government considers the location of a new consumption and treatment site for Cambridge, Create timely and caring decisions that foster the common good, save lives, and recognize your love for each and every one of us. Bless the work of all who help in providing vaccinations. Keep our frontline workers safe and give them much needed rest. Move us each to do our part in following the guidance of our public health authorities so that our health system does not become overwhelmed. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for faithful ancestors in every time and place whom you have called forth to do your work and will. Envelop them in your love that we may be reunited with one another in the last days. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. And now we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share that peace. Receive the blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. peace, you 
are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.